So today I'm going to do a ball fade for y'all um, on a head that has deficiencies. But what's going to be the icing on the cake is the fact that I got on my um, Astro Kicks and Goods smock. And I got the cape to match it. Pop it. I pop tags. And I got the shoes to go along with it too. One of the most comfortable pair of shoes that you can wear standing up cutting hair all day. Considering I used to start at 4 o'clock in the morning and wouldn't get done until 1 the next morning. I could stand in these all day long. So y'all ready? Let's do it. So you see the deficiencies in her hair? See that? So that's a form of alopecia. Alopecia areata. All right. Now you see it, and shortly now you won't. Here we go. Now I'm gonna start with my masters all the way closed. Now, I did a fade before and I explained that when you use the masters all, all the way closed, it's better than using, to me, your liners or five out. Some people take and they, they put the line in, but it, the line is hard to get out when you do that. So we're just gonna use the masters all the way closed or whatever clipper you choose to use. And we're gonna go for it. Now, as you can see, I hold my clippers as if I'm writing, so to speak, because I'm creating art. Some people hold their clippers like this. You can't be one with your clippers if you hold them like this. So I normally hold it like this, in case y'all asking. Now it's very important, and I'm using some technical terms, but it's very important that depending on what the deficiencies is in the head and where the occipital is, so this is the crown of the head, right? The occipital is back here. So you don't want to cut it too low, depending on if they had that the little hot dog back there. <laughs> so you always want to cut it up over because it's going to make the head look, I mean, the, the fade look kind of goofy. So, all right. Now, I might not be bald as you want underneath now. And the reason I do that because I'm not going to use this to do it anyway. So I'm just saving myself some time because I'm going to go over with the five out anyway. Five out. five out basically is like, it's like close like liners, but it's like five zeros. And she's a lady, which means that I have to be even more intentional about making sure that even though she's getting a ball fade and Aligning, I still have to be more intentional about making sure that it's softer versus <laughs> masculine, if you will. All right. So now we're going to use the Osters, Classic 76, and we're going to use the 5 out in order to bald it out. See how bald that is? But some people take and they use, everybody can't take the shavers on the back of their head. Everybody can't take that. Well, so you know I use the five. Well, I mean, you know, you can pretty much look at their skin, but if you don't have to use the shavers, that's, you shouldn't use them because, you know, some people will get irritated and when their hair start growing back, they'll break out. And it's a form of uh, folliculitis that they could end up getting from that, a lot of ingrowns possibly and all. So the five out makes it just as bald, just as bald. Now I'm doing this just so y'all know, talk about my experience. So I've been cutting hair like this since I was a, uh, 13 years old in my parents' basement. And we had one pair of clippers that we took and we did the whole entire haircut with. One pair of clippers. We would take the screwdriver 
and the, ba the blade didn't even adjust for the first pair of clippers I got and we would take the screwdriver and line the blade up so that way it can line and then when it was time to go back to fading then we would take the screwdriver and, and put it back where the blade was because we only had one pair of clippers and I paid $19 for that and I ended up having my buddy Mike used to cut hair in the basement with me when we was teenagers and I had two chairs in my parents basement and we had the whole south suburb filled up I went to barber school when I was uh, 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. I told my parents, that's what I want to do. I want to go to barber school. I feel like I got my knack in it, and I know how to draw, too. Draw, I mean, barbering is an art and a science, so it's very detailed. So I had that down packed because I'm an artist. And uh, went to barber school at 17, and when I went to school, I pretty much already knew how to, I pretty much already knew how to cut hair. Okay, before I finish with my story. So now the next thing is that some people, some people fade the whole head before they, before they deal with the top. The reason that I don't like to fade the whole head before I deal with the top is because they might want the top lower than what you're doing to fade and you don't want to have to do double work with your, for yourself. So you always want to make sure that all of that's established. I talked before about making sure you go up because her hair is kind of straight and wavy. So I'm going to start off with a one and a half blade just to make sure that more don't come off than I want to come off. And you got to deal with them squirrels accordingly. And I do it in sections too. I'm going to use, I'm using one A. I think a one A will do it. A little bit lower. Lay it down real good. And I do it in sections because if you don't do it in sections, if you just come from the back to the front and do like that, you may run into a cow lick. So you do it in sections to make sure you're getting all the hair off that needs to come off. That's the first thing. And then secondly, so you won't run into no to no cow lick and end up putting a ball spot in your client's head. You gotta follow the swirl correctly. Everybody don't know how to deal with them swirls, but kind of pick at it. Look at the direction of the way the hair is going. When you get to this side, change to your left hand. Now some people say, I'm, but I'm not left-handed though, but it would be awkward to cut like this. That would be awkward. So what you want to do is switch to your left hand and you're not fade, you don't have to fade or align with your left hand unless you're ambidextrous, but I think I said that right. Ambidextrous, ambidextrous. I don't know how to say the word, but I'm kind of tongue-tied right now. But use your left hand on this side. Get the hair off the lady so it won't get on her lipstick. Because it will stick to that lipstick. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do next is, you know what? Maybe I will. I'm going to do another line. I'm going to do this one different. So back in the day, we used to make another line. I'm going to make a line with my one and a half. Make a line all the way around my one and a half. For the fade. Kind of show y'all that instead of fading down. And Clipper Mate comb, best comb, 906. Clipper Mate, baby. I use the comb depending on how high I go up. How thick the hair is should I say, versus using the brush. So I'm using one and a half in order to make my other line. So like I was saying, I went to barber school when I was uh, 
when I was 17, I had all my credits. So when I was a senior, I had a half a day. And I would leave school at 12 o'clock and I would go to barber school. That's when I was 17 and I saved my money. I charged $3 for my first haircuts. And then I eventually went up to $5 because I started smelling myself a little bit. I went up to $5. <laughs> I scratched the price out, the $3 price, and put $5 on there. And, uh, and then I eventually saved my money when I got out of school. And I was able to start charging $10. And I started working in the shop. I wasn't supposed to, but I started working in the shop. When I was 18, charging $10. And um, I saved my money and opened up my first my first barbershop when I was 19 years old, the money I saved. Ain't that something? And Where I, was that location? It was in Matson, Illinois. I had the first black barbershop in Matson, Illinois. So, um, so with that, on a $10 haircut, I used to make between, I used to make between $1,500 and $2,000 a week cutting hair. I used to cut. 25 to 38 heads every day. The most heads I would cut in one day was 48 heads. I would start at four o'clock in the morning. And like I said earlier, I wouldn't get done sometimes until one o'clock the next morning. My father used to come over to the shop like, Larry, you still cutting here? I'm like, yep, still here. Wouldn't sit down all day long. That's why I have my boy James, man. I'm like, man, I gotta come up with, with some gear that's got some swag to it, but also, some gear that's comfortable. I used to wear suits and ties every day. I used to have on them alligator shoes and them shoes used to be tearing my feet up. Do you hear me? Tearing my feet up. <laughs> All right, so that was the one and a half. So I used that in order to establish my second line. So what you can do, matter of fact, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my 1A. I'm using my 1A. So, you got your masters for the first line, you got your one and a half for the second line, so the one A is in between. So I'm gonna use my one A to start getting that line out. But remember, don't touch, don't touch the one and a half line with your one A. So a detachable blade is not a guard, it's a blade. It's one single blade. And the reason that some people are confused about detachables being a guard is because a guard is what goes on the blade. This detachable goes on the clipper, right? Detachable goes on the clipper and a guard goes over the, over the blade. So for the people who are confused about that, Now, I'm using, I'm using the blades kind of like in sequence, but the thing about it is, is that for me, and then depending on how many heads, so I normally used to schedule my clients every half an hour, and scheduling it every half an hour, um, it would give me a time to shoot for in order to be able to, uh, to stay on, on, on point with all of my clients and me getting a certain amount of clients in, along with me finishing at a certain time of the day. So I established like quick ways in order to get my haircuts done, especially if it was a, a, a regular client, I would have some, some shortcuts. So I'm kind of showing y'all a long way right now, but you'll understand. Cause see, I can just use my my one pair of clippers without no guards and just kind of do this whole thing. I'm just kind of showing y'all another way right now. So that was the 1A. So now I'm gonna go down to the one blade. So the one blade, so you got the one and a half, so you got the masters, you got the one and a half that I made this line with, then I got the 1A that I started fading with. Now you got the one. So one and a half, one A, and a one. 
Now remember, she has deficiencies, the alopecia areata. So you'll see some areas that don't look too keen, but I'm gonna still kind of blend it out and make it look all uniform. So I put a different blade on, which means that now you don't want to go up too far past where you did the one A at. So one and a half, one A, then the one. And see the thing about it is with the with the blades alone, what you end up doing is you get you get um a more crispy cut when you're using metal versus plastic. So that's just my preference. When you're using metal versus plastic, you get a crispier cut. It's more clean, it's more precise because the steel doesn't waver, but plastic guard does. And depending on how hard you're pushing or how hard you may not be pushing, when you're cutting the head, it's gonna depend on how that hair comes off the head, believe it or not. So just think about that. When you got a bean head client, I mean, these bean head clients, man, are something else. It's just what it is. I mean, what you go, what else can you do about it? That's the truth. They'll break your clippers. Look at that. They made the clippers go off. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Okay, there it is. Like the Jetsons. And make them come back on. Put a little pep in this. My Starbucks medicine ball. Medicine ball is a tea. It's the best thing to drink at Starbucks. In your Astro gear, right? In my Astro gear, that's right. Correct. Hopefully, I start selling my Astro gear <laughs> at Starbucks. <laughs> Cause they, they be on their feet all day, man. Or Walmart employees. Or whoever. Okay, that was the one. Now, what guard y'all think, I mean, not guard, but what blade y'all think we go do next? The OA. So you got the one and a half. You got the 1A, you got the 1, and now you have the OA. All right? So you're going lower and lower. So now I'm going to get that line out. And the OA could possibly get the line out, but we'll see. We shall see. See, a lot of people, when they use their liners, they can't get the line out real good. And rule of thumb, when I come up cutting here, is... What you put the line in with, that's what you should be able to get it out with. But I also started working smarter, and so I wouldn't have to work harder. And I made it where I didn't have to, I ain't put no thick line in there. No deep line in there, should I say. But see the thing, the difference with the blades versus the guard is, is that with a blade, it's one dimensional, meaning that it's only one size. So because it's only one size, I mean, there's no, there's no altering the blade. And that's why a lot of people aren't comfortable just using blades because it's only one size and they don't know how to manip manipulate it in order to make it do exactly what it is they wanna do. So the guards are just what it is, it's safer, it's a guard. I always say guards are for girls, I mean, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. I ain't knocking nobody if that's what they want to use, but guards are still for girls. For girls here or for the girls to use? For girls to use. For girls to use. All right. Use my mirror to kind of see where I am with it. Now, I still got a, a line that I want to get out. So what I'm gonna use for that is my triple zeros. So you got your one and a half, you got your one A, you got your one, 
You got your OA, now you got the triple zero. That's in order to get that last line out. Even though I use the masters. I remember, every time you switch the blade, don't go up this high. You want to go lower and lower. Because if you go up to the same point, then you're going to establish another line. And you don't want to establish another line. So every time you change the blade, you're going to get lower and lower. See how that line is coming out? And I did the line with the masters. So it just kind of gives you an idea. And I kind of zero gap my masters. But the blade is so much thicker, so it's not still going to put it in there too deep. And believe it or not, if I wanted to, I can take this blade right here, and if you look at this, so you see these screws right here? These screws right here, if you unloosen those, I can take, so this is your steel blade, meaning that this blade doesn't move, and this is your cutting blade, and this blade moves, so this blade is the one to go back and forth. I could literally unloosen this, and I can move my cutting blade close to my steel blade, and I can make it a pair of liners if I want to. But the thing about it is, is that this blade is so much thicker than liners, and you would take the risk. You would risk um, cutting your client's skin. But again, we knew how to do it all. The clippers would be so hot, man, we'd have blood liners and parts and stuff on our clients. But hey, at least they got a nice crispy haircut when that scab healed. <laughs> I got a buddy, Adam, man, he our COO. Man, if I was to cut his hair and line his hair with these, um, these liners, li I mean, with this blade lined up, I would definitely, man, probably give him a blood lining. His skin is thinner, and his hair is finer. <laughs> his hair is finer. His hair is he finer. has a, a nice gray hair. You got that, that kinker bug here. From Africa? That's right. That, that's good though. That's er, over curly. Mm -hmm. People don't know the difference between over cur curly, over curly, round cell. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my two blade to get this line out. And again, I'm taking a long route, but use a two blade. So what's important is is that when you hold the blade close to the hair, you're going to take more hair off, right? And so considering the fact that I'm not going to go beyond the, the two blade, I can use my comb and kind of comb fade it in or I can lift up and kind of establish like a three, three and a half, and whatever. The more I do this, the less hair I take off. The more I lean it in, the more hair I take off. So now we're gonna start trying to take that line out. So up in that area, I'm kind of, you don't want to disconnect it, so I'm kind of thinning it, and I'm using my comb as well. Why not, why not the brush versus the comb? Well, because the hair is thicker in this area. So I'm not using the brush in this area because the hair is so much thicker. And I need to use the comb in order to help with the, the comb fading aspect of it. And before I lay it all the way in to get that line permanently out, I'm just making sure that I don't detach the hair, meaning that I want to make sure that I stay within, like I want to keep the fade attached so it, that way it looks graduated. A lot of people don't know how to blend it correctly. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a line of demarcation. But this is cold though, it's kind of, cause this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> uh, I always say it's a poor dog to wag their own tail. Mm -hmm. Got to wag it a little bit, but it's just what I do. So, will you come back? Will I be able to come back in three weeks or come no. back in a month? No, Wait, no, don't try and do that on camera because no, because you, you can't. Can I don't cut hair like that. But you can show the difference even if it's a month. I'll don't be trying to be slick and trying to let it, trying to get in hair cut. You know I don't cut a lot of hair like that no more. But you can show the difference in, in, in the long version versus the short version. Yeah, but you know the difference between the long version but they and the version. Don't. But they don't. But you do. But yeah. you do. How long I've been cutting your hair? 20 years. 
Longer than that? I, I've been cutting your hair for over 25 years. Yeah, Close to 30 years. So in that case, may, I might have you come back when it grow out to kind of show them how to deal with the alopecia and blend, blend, blend that in. So in three weeks. So three let me weeks. pray about it. <laughs> I will pray about it also. Okay, well you pray about it. I asked Adam if I can do it. If you Adam say, say I can yes. do it, he he might not. No, he's not. Gonna say yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's my guy. He'll normally tell me, no, nah, Lero, mm -hmm. you need to go to Vegas, man. <laughs> it's too cold out there. Now. It's some hot weather, man. But yeah, so that's what I'm doing. So I got the two, but as y'all can see, I'm um I'm keeping it blended. All right, so y'all can see me kind of picking some now too. And what I'm doing is, is that when I pick, I basically, I call it my picking technique. And what I'm basically doing is, is making it where I don't just use the whole blade and go in because I'm gonna cut an area that I'm not really trying to cut. So I'm just picking out areas that I want to specifically get in order to have it blend the way I need it to blend. So that's why I pick. And everybody here goes in a circle. I know I said that before. Everybody here goes in a circle, right? So, but some people here like go straight down and then on this side go down like that. And some people here really go in a circle. And then some people here you really can't tell, but when it's straight, you can really, you can really tell more. Hey, like no lie. And I'm not just saying it because it's my line, but like these astro kicks, AKG as we affectionately call it, these astro kicks, man, like they, they're so, they're not only comfortable on my feet, but, but uh, they're very supportive. Like, so for people who have like, you know, like weak arches and, and um, you know, and who just need the support for their foot, these are very comfortable. So standing on the, on the um, the tension rug, along with the tension mat, I'm sorry, along with a nice pair of comfortable shoes on, you can stand up here and do it all day long. But if your feet hurting, hey, hey man, let me tell you something. It's hard to focus, boy. But all I be thinking about is, man, I can't wait till I sit down. <laughs> so you think that? Yeah, because they're very comfortable. Man, it took us, it, it took a few years, man, to get this, to get this thing, to get this thing, uh, yeah, you know, and I didn't stop until they were comfortable. I just didn't want to sell something that, just to be selling it because they were fashionable. I'm selling comfort. comfort. And Astro Kicks and Goods, I named it 5000 BC. Um, and beyond, and the reason I did that is because 5000 BC is when the first haircut was done. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know what that right, the red, white, and blue barber pole stand for either. The red, white, and blue barber pole, the red blood. is for blood. You ain't know that. You only know it because blood. you heard me talk about it. Well, what is the blue? I can't remember the blue. See what I'm saying? So you let me do it then. <laughs> Not you. I'm telling the story. You go t halfway tell the story. The red, the, the red is for blood. The blue is for veins. You didn't know. You only you said it when I was saying. You heard me start saying the V. Veins. Okay, what is the white for? Um, I can't remember. Come on, come on. You sound like bandages. And a ball on the bottom is called a bassin. And what that's used for is, we did bloodletting back in the day. But it wasn't until the later 1800s until 
they separate the profession. So we were dentists and doctors back in the day. Mm. It's coming along. It's coming along. I'm killing this. I'm killing it. <laughs> Got to have a little fun, y'all. Got to have a little fun. But I feel like if you don't, if you don't love what you do, you have zero chance. And I absolutely love what I do. Love cutting hair. Love making people feel good. Look good. And that's what having a good haircut to do. Especially with your favorite client, right? Yeah. So when that one comes, then. Yeah, you used to be one of my early clients. Yep. All right, so what we're going now is, so I, I pulled my brush back out because I'm going back into the lower area and I want it to be flush. Remember, I use a different brush every client. So I'm taking my one and a half now in order to get the line, because remember what you put the line in with is what you should be able to get it out with. So I'm using my one and a half now to start trying to get the line out. And you gotta use your mirror because your mirror kind of tell you where you at with stuff, you know? So you gotta use your mirror. You can't get around not using your mirror. And I think the light is so important. A lot of people use the ring lights. And I ain't like hating on what you choose to use, but at the end of the day, when you, when you need to see your haircuts, you need some good, bright, fluorescent lights and some good mirror, and you'll be good to go. We almost out of here. It's coming, it's coming. So y'all, this is a long route. But I just wanted to show y'all all blades, which I did, all blades. No guards, no other clippers, just all blades. And what y'all see me doing as far as, so <clears throat> I'm following through, but I'm not staying in one spot. As y'all see, I'm kind of following through. I'm going in and out of there. Just getting the area I need and coming on out. Oh, this looking good. When you came in here, you were tore up from the flow up when you came in here. But now it's it's coming together. Cause you was uh ah, ah! So I did when you first walked in here. For real, seriously. I ain't know what that was. But oh Lord. Now look at you. Mm, mm, mm. I tell you, God works wonders. He works in mysterious ways. The only dilemma is when I finish when I finish walking around, you're not going to be able to do anybody else's hair just like it. That's right. Take a new client. That's right. So, yeah. I don't have time to take new clients. Too busy dealing with the old one. Larry's Barber College, baby. Trying to get some students. Mm -hmm. right. be a billboard, a no, thank you. What about a, can I have some cards, please? And then no. I'll pass them out for no. the students to come. No. So I tried to get that line out with the one and a half. So now what you do is you go back to the 1A. You see why? Like, so this is not like a, a short method. But it, it is, it just depends. I'm talking right now, so I can do it quickly, but I still prefer to use one pair of clippers. To do the whole head? Yeah, depending on what kind of haircut I'm doing, yep. 
because I can just take and adjust my blades when I use one pair of clippers and don't have to switch. Don't have to switch the uh, the blade on the on the detachable clippers. Now y'all see y'all see her defeat. So look, so alopecia areata, right? It's only so much you can do about that, especially when you're cutting a certain certain head. So I'm gonna pick at that a little bit more in order to get that completely completely blended. Okay, so I'm gonna bust out my, my masters now, do some cleanup work. What specific masters do you use? Uh, the masters and this. There's more than one? Yeah, but I, I don't like the ones that are uh, cordless. I like right. the ones that are heavier because I just like, I don't like clippers that, uh, that's battery operated because I feel like it loses its energy and I like the, the heaviness of it. So I got to do this for her hair because I'm trying to blend the, the alopecia. So some alopecia is hereditary which she has hereditary alopecia. So it's called andro alopecia areata. Are you sure it's not astro? No, it could be astro now. It could be astro alopecia. If we can get that in the books, that would be great. But right now we got to say what's in the book. So that's andro alopecia. But astro, that's not a bad idea. Mm. Astro alopecia, that's a great idea. Fixation. See what I'm saying? Mm, the repair. Ooh. If we can get that copyrighted, I might give you a couple dollars. See what I'm saying? After alopecia repair. See what, see what I'm saying? Mmm. <laughs> we can see if we can put that in Webster. Mm -hmm. I'm almost finished showing y'all this demo. And remember, y'all always want to go for, for precision. So some people may say, ah, this is, it's finished, but nah, not quite. Almost. Are you still using your Andrus? Yep. And what I'm going to do now is with my, with my masters all the way open, I'm just going to come down and just lay it down. Kind of top it off. Just like to do that. Make sure everything is in sequence. You almost look like a new person almost. Mm -hmm. So because she has deficiencies, what I'm going to do is, is that now a lot of people use fibers wrong. So I'm going to fix the deficiencies, right? So look at how it is now. And I'm just going to kind of go in there, mist it in some in order to make it make sense. Because I don't want her to feel insecure. Well, if y'all knew her, she is not insecure, not by one, one bit, but at all. And neither are you. Um, I'm, <laughs> we all have our insecurities. Which I am. <laughs> but y'all may say, well, I don't see nothing coming out. So a lot of people like to use the card and do fibers. So they like to use the card and do the fibers. No, because if you, you well, me, I'm not going to say no. If that's what you want to do, do it. But I feel like if you use the card and use your fibers, I think what you do is that you do too much of a buildup around the card versus just doing the fibers around the natural hair lining and let it fall where it may. Why do you choose the, the spray pump over the titanium? 
Um, because I feel like you have better control with it when you're using a pump and you do it from a distance. Because this is just an enhancement. This is not, it's like a corrector to a degree, but enhancement, but some people use it to cover up mistakes and it's not to be used to cover up mistakes. And how long does it last? Well, it depends on how you lock it in. So, how do you lock it in? Uh, with some like spritz holding spray, you can lock it in with the holding spray, so to speak. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna line it. Now remember y'all, so I don't believe in weight lines or anything like that. So just gotta let y'all know because of her alopecia, it may seem like some areas is not completely I would have to go all the way up because when you have alopecia, it kind of makes the skin, kind of makes the skin more, more shiny, if you will. And it kind of like disappears. When I line, I put my, this finger, kind of use that as my, my base. Some people like to hold them in the top of their head or I don't do that. If I need to use some leverage, I use my finger or I use my other hand. Now that's not coming across as, as sharp and crispy right now because she had a haircut by somebody else. Cause I don't know why, why I wasn't cutting hair, but <laughs> they didn't do her line of justice. I'm sorry, it's not funny, but still. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna fix that. Now, a lot of ladies don't take a, a line across the front where it's sharp and detailed. Because remember I said about making it softer on ladies, but um, she actually can take a line that's sharp and more detailed and it don't look so bad, if you will. It don't look too masculine. All right, we're finishing up, but I gotta get the loose ends now. So I close my masses all the way, get the loose ends. I'm gonna do the razor and, and all of that stuff around the front, but I just wanna do this first. So I feel like this is top of the hair cut off. You wanna make it look natural as possible. And put the rays on there a little bit. So some people want to know how to make the liner sharp. You gotta make sure you have some liners that's hitting, but also you can go behind it with the razor and clean up the hairs in front of the liner. Back in the day, we used to do it like that, but we don't want to mess up the haircut now. Not day, so we do it from the front. We didn't change when it made our own little way to do it. Make sure you pull that skin tight. Ooh, this feel, this smock feels so good on me. This Astro Kicks, man. Ooh, I feel like I got like mink on or something. This Astro Kicks. How do this feel? How does cape feel on you? Do you feel warm? Are you warm with this Astro Kicks and Goods Cape On, AKG, as we affectionately call it? Because I feel like like plush on me, like a mink. Ooh. Astro Analysis. Yeah, you can go to Astro Kicks. You can go to AstroKicks.com and grab it, though. Mm -hmm. Grab what, the cape? The cape, the smock, the shoes, mm -hmm. the beanies, mm -hmm. snapbacks, mm -hmm. polos. Got all that stuff in. Mm -hmm. Greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, all. <laughs> <laughs> Hog mog, that ain't the soul. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Do some little cleanup work. And you good to go. Those are biting. They're not biting. Okay. It's, it's just mind. dry. It's in my mind. It's in your mind. Okay. It's all in your mind. Hmm. Now is that biting? No, that's not. Okay then. All right. Not. It's all in your mind. Okay. It's the same clippers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't feel no ways tired like James Cleveland. You come too far from where you started from. <laughs> but nobody told me that the road was going to be easy. Yeah, but, but you still don't believe. <laughs> he said he brought me this far to leave me. Girl. All right, you done. And that's it. That's the ball fade with mm -hmm. alopecia areata. Mm -hmm. Thick blend. With the astro Precision. With the, the astro analysis. Uh huh. The astro analysis uh, activates now. Oil, hook, line, and sinker. Lock it in. With a little freeze. So your fibers won't go nowhere. Then I like to put a little spritz over the whole haircut to make it look even more, like to stay in place. And then like to put a little oil sheen so it won't look dry. That's an astro oil sheen? Astro oil sheen. Coming soon, Maximus, man. Okay. It's coming store soon. Near you? Store near you. Right. Walmart store. Walmart store? It works for me. Are you wearing Astro Baton? <laughs> uh, trying to think, what cologne do I have on today? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? All righty. And there you have it. Can I see a mirror, please? No. Nothing to no. see. Nothing to see? There's nothing to see. Same old, same old. I did the same way. Like I always do it. 